my name is Kaylee. I'm a third year medical student currently doing my surgery rotation in the US. And today I'm just gonna get ready with you. How to do that. Just know when you're about to pass out and you'll be okay, right? Like I was like, that looks like a nipple clamp. And then the surgeon heard me like the attending and he was like, haha, what? <laughs> video because the last one that I did was when I was on the island it was like a little get ready with me for patient interviews and I was so excited and so scared and it feels like it's been a long time and I feel like a completely different person I guess in terms of my confidence and where I am in medicine so it's just fun to redo this and I have a lot to talk about with surgery So before I was saying that I, so before I was saying that I really like neurocritical care and that's true, I do like it. I like it a lot, but that's a fellowship. So I'm kind of getting ahead of myself when I say stuff like that. Oops. Let me put this on first. And for general surgery, I always thought it would be super boring. I'd just stand there, because that's what they always say, they being whatever, the internet, I guess. Um, they always say that, you know, especially for medical students, you just stand there and you attract and do nothing. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna be so bored all day, I'm gonna do nothing. And I was not looking forward to the rotation. And that's what I was telling one of the residents because I thought he was an internal medicine resident. And I was like, oh, I'm just gonna stand there and do nothing. It's not gonna be super medical. And then he was like, oh, like I wouldn't, I hope that we have you, which is funny because I was not talking well about surgery. And he was like, oh yeah, well, I wonder when we'll have you next. And I actually really enjoyed surgery after that, so. But I also wanted to tell an embarrassing story because I want to make people know that no matter what you do on your first surgery, because the first surgery you ever do is very nerve wracking because you don't really know like the rules of the OR, what to expect, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I feel like knowing this embarrassing story of my first time in the OR will help you. So basically what happened is we were doing an AV fistula like creation and I was like there's something called a bulldog and I was looking at it and I was like hmm that looks like a nipple clamp and I said it out loud I was like that looks like a nipple clamp and then the surgeon heard me like the attending and he's like haha what and then I was like a nipple like I repeated myself I said it twice I didn't even try to save myself <sighs> and that he was like uh -huh. I don't know. <laughs> After that, I feel like that's good. That's what I'm gonna think about on my deathbed. You know, like that was my first ever surgery, and I said that. And he was. I mean, you know, never brought it up again. Thank God. <laughs> surgery which isn't the best because if you watch my video on my score reveal you know what I got and you know it's not very competitive for surgery especially me being an IMG from Ross So I'm just hoping to make myself more competitive with like uh, publications and my step two score. And also we'll see what step one even means in the future, you know, considering it's about to be pass fail. So does that mean that it won't, like I'm thinking maybe applying, like I'm applying match 2023. That's what I'm applying. So if I'm applying then some of the people will have pass fail by then. So I don't know if like step one will mean more, if it'll mean less. No clue. But yeah, I'm actually really enjoying surgery. I like that how 
quickly the day goes by. I like how you really see what's happening. And I liked, um, you know, before I thought that surgery wouldn't be very medical. It's just kind of like, okay, you get in there and you fix some stuff and whatever. But, you know, you really have to sit and think. And, you know, one of the fourth year residents was talking to me about it. He was like, yeah, I mean, you have to be very sure, like in, in uh, Like the fact that you have to be way more sure of your decisions like for if you're in internal medicine or if you're in anything that you're not doing your procedure then if you give them a medication it's most likely not going to like hurt them like if their white count is up but you don't really necessarily think it's a infection and you give them some, antibi some antibiotics yeah they might get like a, a worse infection but it's not likely you know it's not like you gave them an unnecessary surgery so i like the fact that with surgery like you really have to sit and think you really have to communicate with the patient like hey this is why we're doing so you have to be very good at you know getting your point across you know i like all that <laughs> It's a weird way to describe surgery, but I do feel like it's really interesting and satisfying. stories after the whole nipple clamp situation with the bulldog but you know if you guys have any embarrassing stories i would love to hear them so that i feel better so if you can comment that that'd be great vascular surgery and the thick you so that's like after surgery they they go there if they need extra care like if they've had like an abdominal aorta repair they'll go there like for example with the vascular surgery we had a lot of people that needed a sick you bed afterwards so I was in the sick you which is pretty similar to the MICU. So SICU Surgical Intensive Care Unit, MICU Medi Medical in uh, Intensive Care Unit. So I've been in both and they're pretty, they have the same vibes. I mean, you're just taking care of sick patients, but for MICU people were in there forever. And something that's kind of sad that's happening with COVID, you know, everything is very sad with COVID, but um, right now, People aren't getting surgeries because they don't have beds in the hospital. And that sucks. Like if you're not super sick and it's somewhat elective, like it's technically elective, but like, is it like someone's walking around right now with a dying foot because they don't have a bed because of COVID and that sucks. Because once you take you know, a limb, you should be in the SICU or MICU, but right now that's all of the resources are going towards COVID patients again, which sucks because we were doing so well, you know? Like when I first started in April of this year, there wasn't really, it was like, so if you have 20 beds, 10 of them were COVID. And then towards the end of my medicine rotation, which ended like a month or two ago, we had like one or two, if that. And now it's full again, and we're dedicating whole units and floors and sections, and it just feels like it happened so quick, and I don't know. Yeah, it's sad for, it's affecting everything. It's 
interesting too is, you know, I practice and practice and practice and practice. All like, I, if you look at my scrubs, I always have some like ties or whatever you call them. They're, yeah, they're called ties. Um, I always have them so I can practice my knot, my knots. And for some reason, it's just, I mean, I feel like that it's like performance anxiety or something. But, you know, I'll practice all day, all night, trying to get these knots down so that when I'm in surgery, you're quick and efficient. And then I finally am able to do one, like do like a suture, do a knot, and I'm just struggling so hard. Like, ugh, and I feel so bad because you know, you're holding up so many people, like you're holding up the scrub tech, you're holding up the nurse, you're holding up the anesthesiologist because you're taking your sweet time with the sutures, but you know, you gotta learn. It's just hard. I feel like it's the gloves, it's the, you know, lack of practice, I guess, even though I feel like I practice a lot. I don't know. If you have any advice on how to get better, let me know. Cause I swear I'm using my hands all day, trying not to be awkward, but you know, you have to wear two gloves in surgery. I was surprised by how much clinic there is too, like how much non-surgery there is in surgery. And I've been slacking on studying. There's something about, you know, like it's so much more fun to just do it. Like you're in it, it's fun, you're you're learning and you're listening. So then when you're doing questions, you're like, ah, this is so boring. So I haven't been able to bring myself to do a whole lot of questions. Like I, like I want to do like 10 a day and then like 40 on the weekends. And I'll get the weekend done because I'm not in the hospital. I don't really have any distractions. When I'm at the hospital, I'm like, mm, there's cool stuff going on. And I want to see it. Yeah, if you don't know, I have my eyebrows microbladed and I have my eyeliner tattooed, I guess. It's like micro lining, but I mean, she used a tattoo gun, so it felt like tattooing. And I plan on doing a video on all of my tattoos soon because I think it's interesting. You know, I'm a little med student and I mean, especially in surgery, like you can't really cover, you can cover up, you can cover up, but not so much because you have to scrub in. So I do have tattoos showing and can't really hide it very well. So, you know, whether or not I want to be professional, can't really do that. I mean, I don't think having tattoos makes you not professional, but you know, I just don't really have the choice to hide them with the attendings anymore. You know, you can when you're in a, not in the OR, but once you're in, you gotta scrub to your elbows. So it's not, you know, I can't go. But now I'm at 11 tattoos, unless you count my, these guys. I don't, but that would be even more. Right now I'm on urology, so I've done some prostate exams, and I was surprised by how, I feel like everything kind of surprised me by how, how chill I was with it, I guess. Like, I mean, it's a medical procedure, so you shouldn't really be like, oh my God, I'm doing a prostate exam. But I kind of thought that would be in the back of my head, but nah, it was, I mean, it was a medical procedure and it felt like it, you know, very, wasn't gross, nothing. I mean, of course it's not gross. You're dealing with a human being and bodies aren't gross, but I don't know. I just thought I would have more reaction, I guess. Same with, um, same with surgical procedures. Like the day before I was like hyperventilating before my first surgery. Cause I was like, I'm going to pass out. I'm going to throw up. I'm going to do whatever. Cause I'm going to be so like, Oh my God, body parts. Like I just really thought that was going to be me. I was going to, make the whole place not sterile. Like that's that's what I was freaking out about. I was like, okay, I just have to know when I'm about to pass out. Just gotta do that. Just know when you're about to pass out and you'll be okay. 
right? Like just know that you have to leave the OR when you feel this so that you don't make everything not sterile and you don't throw up everywhere. Like, you know, like that's literally all that was going through my head the day before, the day of, and the first surgery came around. I was like, hmm, this is nothing. And it was, but it was like a little part of the body. So I was like, maybe, maybe there's still a chance that I'm gonna, you know, have a reaction, but no. I mean, I've seen into people's lungs, which was super cool. I've seen, you know, people's hearts for, I did like, I saw that's procedure. So that's video assisted thoracic surgery, which is super cute. And that's like we removed a tumor. We've removed multiple tumors from the lung. And all of those are so cool. Cardiothoracic surgery is just so cool. And I had my, in SICU, I had the first time that I was doing compressions. And it was crazy because while I was doing compressions, someone, which is the coolest surgeon ever, he is such a badass. He came in and he was huffing and puffing and pushing shit around. He was awesome. So he was just like, all right, I know what I need to do. While we're doing compressions, he gets him started. He does a femoral line so he could get him on ECMO, which is crazy. Like while we're doing compressions, there's a bunch of people all around this man. Like I was doing compressions. Another medical student was doing compressions. A PA was doing them. Like we were all switching. So we're pumping this man's chest and he is starting this man on ECMO, which is crazy. It was just so, it was so cool. So cool. Like cardiothoracic surgeons are just badasses. I mean, they're all, you know, all surgeons tend to be badasses, but like, oh my gosh. I know I've been doing my eyeliner or whatever, my mascara for 30 minutes. I don't know, it'd be nice to hear what you guys have to say, like what you thought surgery would be like before you started and then how you think of it after. If you haven't already started surgery rotation, do you have questions that I can hopefully help you with? Mm -hmm. Something I hate about, uh, you know, being a medical student is that you have to ask for evaluations and that just feels like another thing that these people have to do. They're super busy and now you're asking them for an evaluation. Like, do they really want to spend their time thinking about you, little medical student? Eh. Like, it just, it hurts to ask. I don't know why. I have to be better at that. done like general surgery or colorectal and those are supposed to be like the most crazy badass ones that you're doing you're like you're holding guts and you're you know suturing so much and you're doing a bunch so I'm excited for that so I think that's when we'll really know like how surgery will uh you know how much I'll really love it and you know that's electives too electives help you decide whether or not this is really what you want to do for the rest of your life And I feel like anyone that you talk to, like all the doctors are like, don't do it, don't. Like all the residents for surgery are like, no, no, no. And all the internal medicine people and everyone basically is like, don't try to be a surgeon. Like you're not gonna have a life, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, I feel like no matter what, I'm gonna spend the next, like, I'm gonna have some type of fellowship, you know, no matter what, it's gonna take me like six years of residency and fellowship and training and whatnot. So I'm not too scared of that. It doesn't really, you know, I'm, I'm 23, I'm, I'll probably be 30 by the time I'm, at, I'm an attending, so, meh. But 
I wonder if there's like a, I feel like there has to be, right? Like a little cheat sheet on like all the stuff that you should study before you start each service. Like I feel like with vascular, like you should know BKAs, AKAs, like below the knee amputation, above the knee amputation. You should know AV fistula creation, ligation, you know, and EVARs. If you're trying to do urology, you should do, or if you're about to start urology, you should look up prostates, like prostectomies. You should look up some like gallbladder, or not gallbladder, um, kidney stone removals and whatnot. And then for SICU, like it's just know in the ICU. And then we'll see about the other ones. Please go ahead and give a like and subscribe. I do a lot of study with me, uh, especially on Saturdays when I have time off. And I also, you know, like to bring you along on my journey for medicine. But I feel like I have a lot more to say about surgery, so that will be for the next video. And I really appreciate you guys watching, and I hope I see you on the next one. Bye. <laughs>